Okay, let's finish this up. The what we had gotten is <coughs> we had gotten the Jacobian of the transformation, and now we're going to end up using that. So basically, our goal at this stage is to get the trace of the energy of momentum tensor is alpha s over 12 pi f squared. Um, and then there's a mass term, psi bar psi, which is explicit breaking. Okay, the so let's do the following. So we're going to do our path integral condition. from last time, and we're going to add a source, which is the fermion part of the energy momentum tensor. So let's make it theta mu nu is i over 2 psi bar gamma mu d nu left and right psi. So that's the fermion piece. And the path integral then with the source is a function of h, this is the source term, integral d psi, d psi bar, e to the i, integral d4x, what, lqcd, psi, plus h theta mu mu. So there's the source that's going to tell us whether the trace is zero or not. Okay? So, if we let um, psi of x equals e to the minus alpha over 2 um, psi prime of x um, we then to first order in alpha, then, we have psi bar i d slash psi equals psi bar prime i d slash psi minus alpha psi bar i d slash psi. We can put the primes there. Um, and then there can be a piece which is plus i psi bar gamma mu psi d mu alpha, which we can integrate by parts and drop. So this will drop. Um, likewise, psi bar m psi is m psi bar prime psi minus alpha psi bar m psi. Okay, so the mass term also picks up a piece, and I'm carrying the mass along here, even though I dropped it in the actual class. Okay, so this tells us that if we have the integral d4x Lagrangian of QCD with size in it, plus Here's alpha of x, theta mu mu. So we'll just this is going to be used in the relation below. Is then the integral d for x l of psi prime plus alpha psi bar m psi. Okay, so this is the invariance of the Lagrangian. If, the, if in the shift by this, this particular rescaling, um, the Lagrangian goes into itself with psi prime, except for the mass term, which has a, a leftover piece. We then plug this into our test. The test was z of h plus alpha of x, which is 
integral d psi d psi bar e to the i integral d four x l of psi plus h plus alpha theta mu mu and the question is is this equal to z of h If it is, then the trace has to be zero because the this extra constant did, doesn't do anything. That's our path integral test. Okay, so using the relation that I just wrote up there, this is still d psi, d psi bar, e to the i integral d for x. But now it's the Lagrangian with psi primes in it plus h theta mu mu plus alpha psi bar prime and psi prime. So there's an explicit breaking there, so it's not going to exactly be it. But otherwise, our alpha has disappeared if I could shift the variable. But this then, by our previous calculation of the Jacobian, is d psi prime, d psi bar prime, times a Jacobian, and times times the same stuff there. We're going to write that as e to the e to the log j. And so the Jacobian not being zero is going to give us the anomaly piece. The so we're, what we do now is we compare um, the last line, which has H there and Jacobian, and we compare it with the first line. So first and last, we see that up on the first line we have e to the i e for x theta mu mu times alpha of x. And on the second line, we have log j plus integral d4 x uh, alpha of x m psi bar psi. So without log j, we just can conclude that the the trace was m psi bar psi, which is, of course, what the naive expectation would be. But then we have the log of j. We've calculated this is an i integral d4x with 3 m to the fourth over 4 pi squared plus g squared over 48 pi squared f mu nu f mu nu plus m psi bar psi, all of this times alpha of x. Okay. This guy I'll dispose of in a minute. That's going to be zero point energy. And the, it ends up giving our desired relationship. The trace of theta is alpha strong over 12 pi f mu nu plus m psi bar psi. So we've gotten our relationship out. OK, so a couple comments on this. The one, the constant the constant if we have theta mu mu, which has a piece that looks like lambda lambda g mu nu, then the vacuum matrix element of theta 
is for a lambda. The constant piece then, the m to the fourth piece is just part of that. And so this is the, this is in fact the zero point energy. regularized in a gauge invariant way for fermions. That's the path integral way of getting the zero point energy that we most often get by doing the canonical quantization. So that's comment number one. Comment number two is that this was just the fermion part. There's also gluons which also contribute. And so the overall result is theta mu mu is turns into the beta function of QCD over 2G F squared plus sums of the masses. Mu U bar U plus MD T bar D MS S bar. Okay. So that's that's the calculation, the full calculation. Um, the application is also quite interesting. The the if I take the matrix elements of some momentum state P, P prime, theta mu nu. This is some normalization. It's p mu p prime nu plus p prime nu p mu, which goes when p goes to prime goes to p in the forward direction, goes to this normalization times two p mu p nu. So then the trace. measures the mass is normalization times 2m squared. And the typical normalization that we use is n is 1 over 2e. This is just the, the mass of the particle in that normalization. But anyhow, clearly, if the physics is scale invariant, has no scale in it, there can be no mass. And so theta mu mu equals zero would imply all the masses equal to zero. And if they're single particle states. And that clearly doesn't work very well. In QCD, we see this to be, um, we have the mass of the proton, for example, is proton. Um, it's the beta function f squared plus mu u bar u md d bar d plus ms s bar s proton. In class, we spent some time discussing the fact that, that this quantity is known. Basically, there, the ms s bar s is, is slightly unknown, but it's, it seems to be quite small. The the um, mu mass terms actually can be extracted from experiment from chiral symmetry. This is about 45 MeV. That's a longer story, which I don't want to get into. But then this this guy turns into something that's of order 890 MeV. So if not for that trace anomaly, the presumably the mass of the proton would be something much smaller. The dominant piece is the piece that comes from the trace anomaly. That's and that's consistent. The quark masses are quite small. If they were zero, we'd have scale invariance. If it were not for the anomaly, and if the masses were zero, the anomaly has to give all the mass. There's the application for that. 
then in class we finished out by talking about the second way of deriving this, which was with Feynman diagrams. Here, let's just sketch this most briefly. Let me just take the gluonic part in this case. It's easiest. If the theta mu, mu for gluons is is minus f mu lambda f lambda nu plus one quarter g mu nu f squared. So that the trace is d minus four over four f squared. So the trace of the first one is the minus 1, trace of g mu nu is d, so d over 4. And then there's the fermion piece. But if you're looking at matrix elements, let's take some matrix element. We suspect that there might be a two gluon matrix element of the trace. And we start to calculate that. We would calculate it with diagrams that look like here's gluons going out of the triangle. There's also a piece that looks like like that. But the main point is that the there's a set of diagrams to calculate. These diagrams are divergent. one does this carefully, the result is that the this goes like the divergent piece g strong squared one over d minus four times the d minus four over four times a number. But it's something that's not equal to zero. You carefully pull out the piece, and you get theta mu mu is the beta function of a 2g f squared. So you get the same relation. It's not as, to me, it's much more understandable how a symmetry is violated in the path integral approach, because you can see the Lagrangian can be invariant, yet the path integral cannot be. And um, so there's a logic to it that is more of a surprise when you're doing the Feynman diagram calculations, but they yield the same result. Okay, that's where I'm going to end. Come back next time. I'm going to very quickly do two other ways to show this that emphasize the infrared physics a bit, and then we'll go on to gravitational and um, conformal anomalies. Okay, stop.